Hi, I'm Marcelo Simons. Welcome to my channel. Today, we are here to talk about droop control. The integration of multiple renewable energy sources can be considered a microgrid, and it can also behave as a smart grid. We can discuss what is smart grid in another opportunity. Today, we will understand the control principles necessary to manage active and reactive power in a microgrid. A microgrid combines loads with source, traditional as well as alternative, using storage for compensation of the random nature of wind and solar, allowing for intentional islanding and even waste heat can be recovered. Our power systems industry uses a control technology that has been available for many decades called droop control. The AC electrical power system has a common frequency. Most of generators operate based on power transfer that depends on this utility frequency. A slight variation of such instantaneous variable from their nominal value, 60 Hz in the United States, 50 Hz in Europe, makes possible to decide how to share the generated power coming from a turbine with the grid. It's simple, does not require external communication, and it has proven utilization for several decades. In the past few years, our distribution grid is becoming bidirectional because users like you and me can now connect our own renewable energy source such as wind turbines, solar arrays, or even a plug-in electric car. Therefore, the technique of droop control became a common term for users. The discussion today is on the principles of droop control, starting from the foundations of synchronous machine operation and how they are adapted and used for modern inverter-based microgrids, how the principles of centralized control can be used for local control. Conventional droop control method. The droop control is certainly the most popular control technique, with a long history of use for the synchronous generator control in power systems. Recently, it has been used for parallel inverter control, especially in the case of inverter-dominated microgrids. Microgrids are made up of different types of distributed energy production resource, such as solar panels, fuel cells, wind turbines, and so on. Every resource needs a power electronic interface to transfer the energy to the common bus. Without laws of generality, we can model a single interface as an inverter connected to the common bus through a decoupling impedance. The active and reactive power transmitted across a lossless line are, given in this equation, where P is EV divided by X sine of the phase shift, and Q, the reactive power, is EV cosine of the phase shift minus the square of the voltage divided by X. We can assume that the power angle is very small, and we can simplify by assuming that the line of a small angle is approximated by the value of the angle. The phase shift is approximate by this, Px divided by Ev, E minus V will be proportional to Qx divided by E. From the above equations, it can be derived that the active power is dependent on the power angle, while the reactive power mostly depends on the output voltage. The droops can be defined for amplitude and the frequency of the inverter output voltage indicated in this figure. Here we have two equations. Uh, omega is uh, omega star minus kp multiplied by p, and e is equal e star minus kq multiplied by q. Omega star and e star are set points for the output voltage, angular frequency, and the amplitude at no load. And Kp and Kq 
are called group coefficients for the frequency and amplitude. Those equations are plotted in their features showing the typical frequency and voltage droop characteristics. When frequency falls, the output power of the generating unit is allowed to increase. A falling frequency indicates an increase in loading and a requirement for more active power. Multiple parallel units with the same droop characteristics can respond to the fall in frequency by increasing their output active power simultaneously. The increase in output active powers will counteract the reduction in frequency and the units will settle down in a steady state point on the droop characteristic. The droop characteristic therefore allows multiple units to share load without the units fighting each other to control the load. The same logic can be applied to the voltage droop characteristic. So, with a simple observation of instantaneous variation of frequency, the controller can command the required set points for sharing active and reactive power. In this presentation, I discuss the principles of droop control. Here, we learn how a proportional control that depends on frequency and a graph describing the variations of frequency with active and reactive powers, P and Q, can set up generators, inverters, and manage a microgrid to interact with the utility grid. This is Marcelo Simos. And I thank you in watching my channel.